Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, today's just a quick video. I'm adding a little preamp board to my Class D, the TPA3255, I believe it is. It's a 300 watt plus 300 watt, which those aren't the real specs. You know, my earlier video, I'll put the links down below. There's kind of a playlist going on with this amp. I'm going to put it into a box, which I showed in a previous video. I got the uh, switching power supply, the amplifier, now I got the preamp. So I'm going to start stuffing it in the box. So the next video you'll see is on this amp will be the assembly. Okay. Uh, but here's the preamp. What I want to do is I want to use, I've got this power supply, it's up 10 volts, putting in to this board. I'm going to actually run the voltage off of a uh, regulator on this board. Okay. But for now, I'm just using this to see what this looks like. We're going to use the FLIR. I'm going to use the decibel function on this to look at the voltage on the dB. See how much gain I get through the preamp going to here. I just want some gain because I want this amplifier when it's in the box to be able to run off a turntable or just any kind of input so you don't have to have a preamp. Uh, there's going to be some volume control knobs between the output of this yeah, I think the output of this into the this app. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna do that, and uh, we will come over here and just measure it. Let's just do it. And so I think this would be kind of cool to see how the decibel function works on a multimeter. So let's just come over and do it. All right, guys. So this is a signal from the generator right here on this on these. If I can touch them here, let me see. And it should be about one volt RMS. There we go. And look at that, zero dB. Okay. It's one zero zero three nine. So yeah, that's zero dB. Okay, so now if I go to the uh, output of that board, which is the input into this board, we've jumped it up to 3.44 volts. So a gain of three, or in decibels, gain of 10.73. It's pretty cool, right? Let me bring this meter up nice and close for you to see. See if I can use my meter probes like chopsticks. I'm sure you guys have all done this before. There we go. Pretty cool, huh? And that's because I moved this order. Okay, then if I toggle through this, I'll go through. There we go. One kilohertz. So, whoops. Dang it. Slid off. So, there we go. One kilohertz. Pretty nice little meter. It makes it real easy. You just use, you just move this arrow across like this to pick the thing you want to read. So hertz, for instance. Okay, there we go. One kilohertz. I slid off, and there's our delta. We can, uh, you know, use the delta mode if we want. And I come over here back to dB. Whoops. I had to come over here and turn this off. There we go, 10.73 dB. It has a nice little screen too. Uh, over here we have the frequency, uh, you know, the variable frequency drive, the filter. Uh, so there's, yeah, pretty cool options on this meter. I reviewed it once, I'll put a link down below if you're interested in this meter, but I just wanna show you how the decibel function works on these multimeters. I think it's a really cool feature that I wish Fluke would have kept in the 87 when they brought it out but they had it in 189 anyway there we go okay guys I had to bring in my favorite fluke by far and here let's measure so I got it on decibel see it had the DB far better than these whoops you can't see it there we go it's far better than 87 I think that's why they discontinued it because they didn't want to kill the 87 cells and that's because 87 is contracted by so many agencies. At least that's my personal opinion. There we go. 10.7 dBs out, 3.429 volts in. See that? Okay, here, let me go to the input. One volt and, and almost zero dB. 1004 and 0 0.03 dB. Pretty cool meter, huh? 
Take it off the dust bowl. Now, one thing I want to show you is you notice how it switches between dust bowl here and AC here? That's also a really cool feature. See that? That's awesome, right? Yeah, I love this meter. Uh, I got to fix this meter because the terminals here are kind of messed up, but that's what happens when you get a used meter. Um, thing with flutes, they've been around for 20 years, so when you buy one, you never know what shape it's going to be in. It has two brightness levels, you can see that. So anyway, there you go. Just wanted to show you the flute. <laughs> All right, guys, had to pull out the Fluke 189. Still my favorite Fluke meter by far. Uh, just great meters. Too bad they discontinued it. Came out the same time the Fluke 87 did. And even Fluke's marketing material said something like has five or so on features plus more than the 87, which... I think they realized it was going to kill the 87, so I think that's why they discontinued it. Because that's not normally the way they do things. They just add in the series, right? Uh, they came out the 289, which is much different meter than this. But since when they came out the 70, you know, 7, they didn't get rid of the 73, right? Or the 75, or, you know. So, yeah, they don't typically get rid of meters. This is one of the few that they got rid of, which is actually the best meter they ever made in my humble opinion. So anyway, there we go. Just on my soapbox with Fluke. <laughs> what do you guys think? Despo functions are cool. I like them. Yeah, Fluke 189, awesome meter. The Fleur, awesome. The Hioki has it. There's the high, you know, what I call the high-end meters have it. Uh, the Fluke 289, that beast up there does. It's a monster. It's gigantic. Goes through batteries like crazy, so I don't use it. Uh, I bought it for the channel, but yeah, it's, yeah, not a fan. So anyway, what do you guys think? I'm going to finish this up. I'm also uh, working on the design for John Audio Tech. I'm going to do a video on that. We're going to try to get that on a board real quick, okay? Sorry I haven't done a video on that for a bit, but I will. <laughs> All right, guys, hey, two thumbs up to my patrons as always. Uh, appreciate you guys. And the, the guys that have hit the thank you, there's a thank you button down below. It's like a, a way to, it's, I think it's cool. It's something YouTube added and it's not been out very long, but it's a way to, you know, do a one-time donation kind of thing, buy a cup of coffee, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, the Patreon link's down below as well. Uh, but just hitting the like button if you like the video, that helps me a lot, helps the video. And so... Appreciate all you guys watching the video, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Got a couple projects going on besides this one. Best start doing catching up on videos, right? All right, see you next time. <laughs>